Hi there, welcome back to your Patrick's review. Okay, just, just filling around with my <laughs> volume there. Sorry about that. In this episode, this is a bit of a milestone for me because this is the first time I'm going to review a film that's on the Mill Creek catalog. Now, in Christmas of 2018, I had a friend import me a couple of those Mill Creek uh, bargain basement box sets. Pure terror and sci-fi invasion, to be exact. I'm going to spend, on the next few years, I'm going to review every single film of both sets. So there are a couple of films that are, that are common to both sets, like Hands of Steel, which is probably the last one I'm going to do for that, and a few other films as well, many of which have never been released in Australia. Now, in this episode, we look at the film Curse of Bigfoot, which was one of those 1970s Bigfoot films. I actually got a couple of those. Legend of Bigfoot. This particular film was originally a night. It was originally a 1958 uh, horror film called Teenagers Battle of the Thing, which only ran like 59 minutes. It was in black and white. You know, numerous public domain copies of both the original Teenagers Battle of the Thing and the augmented TV version Curse of Bigfoot exist. Like I said, this review copies part of the 50 film box set Pure Terror. That was issued onto bargain basement stores by Mill Creek Home Entertainment, a company that specializes in releasing numerous large volume public domain box sets. But this is all in Region 1. I have not seen a local copy of this in Region 4 so far. Now, this film is also, it's actually found on Disc 9 of the Pure Terror set. Now for the story. A high school teacher introduces an old friend of his to his class to tell him a story about an encounter he had in his youth. No, they're researching monsters and stuff. <laughs> Fifteen years before, the, the man had been part of a group of high school students taking a field trip to the countryside to dig for Native American artifacts. They stumble onto a clue of some kind of stone that suggested something strange on top of a large rock formation. Climbing the rock, they discover a cave that had been sealed up with a very old stone lid. Removing the lid, the students find an ancient mummified corpse in the cave that's filled with uh, incense smoke, very ancient smoke that dissipated. It was encased in clay, and the smoke dissipates as soon as they enter it. Taking the corpse down to their camp, they are shocked when the corpse stirs and breaks out of its clay casing, revealing an ancient, hairy, giant humanoid creature that goes on the loose, killing anybody that's away. Now, this 1975 telepic was a film, and this reviews for the augmented version, because of Bigfoot, was a, was a film that developed a modest reputation as a minor grade Z stinker among those who have seen it being screened on American late night television during the 1970s, 1980s. And it had some pretty heavy rotation during those late night programs. It is considered among those in the know as the very worst in the 1970s Bigfoot films, even worse than the likes of the quasi documentary Legend of Bigfoot, which itself has attained street credit as being a formidable bad movie and is currently in public domain. Originally an ultra-low-budget black-and-white monster film that was given a very rare theatrical release in 1958 in the director's hometown under the title Teenagers Battle the Thing, running at only 59 minutes long. The film that would become Curse of Bigfoot was augmented with new footage in 1975, a release on the television that same year, the only further continuity being the addition of one of the original cast members to reprise his role as a narrator to a class of 1970s high school students most of them look like they're stoned out of their minds. The rest of the extra footage mostly consists of a high school teacher talking to his students about the perceived existence of the mysterious Bigfoot creature, something that drags the film down considerably, while footage of logging operations is displayed on the screen. The original footage has also been colorized, which manages to match the style of the new footage, perhaps the only plus for this shitty flick. If you really wanted to see this film in the most effective manner, I suggest you see the original version first, and by the way, you can see both of these on YouTube, as this is basically a very short, low-budget monster movie with a creature that is made up of one of the very worst low-budget costumes I've ever seen. Literally an extremely cheap costume that has the most unconvincing face. I have heard one reviewer on the internet make the remark that the monster looks like a man wrapped in toilet paper, then rolled in shit, and I would agree with that sentiment wholeheartedly. Or for the reviewers for the extended version, I would consider the original version to be pretty bad itself, although not entirely terrible. I mean, it's like 59 minutes long, <laughs> but the longer version is 
88 minutes of pure pain. As for the extended version, called Curse of Bigfoot, cashing on the then current Bigfoot craze that was gripping the country at the time, something that I find perpetually amusing, since the original footage of the Bigfoot in the forest was later deemed a hoax. We all seen that footage, and it's just, it's fake. But the Himalayan one, the Yeti, that's, it's possible that exists. And although that didn't stop filmmakers from propping up a large amount of de cheap, degraded films at the time. Like I mentioned, there's another film on my possession called Legend of Bigfoot. I have this on the St. Clair Vision uh, Driving Classics set. Nine films in that one. I will review that set as well in the future. So I've got quite a few American discs to review. And which was a quasi-documentary that came out at the same time as Curse of Bigfoot. And is reputed to be really bad. Like I said, I'll cover that film in the future. Anyway, this film is pretty much a worse deal than the original version. The extra footage... Like I said, consisting of lumberjacks cutting down trees and logging operations going on while the narrator waxes lyrical about the possible existence of Bigfoot to the point of tedium is so bloody dull that it makes the less patient of the audience feel sleepy. If you've got the attention span of an ADD sufferer, this will put you in a coma. What's more, the lecture part of the film fails to be resolved at the end. Indeed, the whole first 29 minutes of the film are the new footage tacked on to the old footage without it having, having it capped the end of the film, thus robbing us of the chance to see the student's reaction to the whole story. So it's basically 29 minutes of new footage, then the old, the entire old film put on, thing and no new footage at the end. So you're not going to see <laughs> the new footage at the end of the film. The acting as of the standard El Cheapo's 1950s acting that was stock and parcel of the decade, I'm talking about the old version here, the new, ver new scenes... Uh, no, the acting, the, like I said, the students look like they're pretty much stoned. <laughs> and the, the actor who reprises a role from the original film version, he's okay. I mean, given he's a bit shell-shocked, but <laughs> anyway. Director Dave Flocker, who plays one of the original students and also appears as an adult in New Footage, runs the whole show with, without making even the most rudimentary attempt at suspense. The result is a deftly dull grade Z telepic schlocker that won't ever make anybody's list of classics or even guilty pleasures. Well, maybe some people are part of the bad movie cult. Probably since the whole thing is about as dull as sorting out years worth of bills that have been messed up out of order. Watching paint dry is literally more exciting than this. Now, as for the gore report, the creature is set on fire at the end. That's about it. No nudity-ness. As for the DVD, the augmented version of the film, The Curse of Bigfoot 1, is available in the Mill Creek box set entitled Pure Terror. It's found in disc 9 of that set, with a poor quality print that looks like it's been left to age for at least 30 years or so. The resolution is terrible, although the print is not entirely unwatchable, despite the lack of shadow detail. The soundtrack is a rather teeny mono operated to stereo, and there are no subtitles, no supplemental features either. I give Because of Bigfoot a D minus, a 1 out of 10, which essentially makes it a terrible film. Although the original version, as a caveat, would just barely get a D plus due to me slightly being less torturous to watch. Like it's the costume itself, if you see the monster, looks horribly bad. Anyway, that's it for this review. And about a day after this review is done. It's going to be Australia Day here. Yeah, us. us. <laughs> Happy Australia Day. Anyway, that's it for this review.